to Unique Parenting. I am B. Moyes, and today I want to talk about um, testing and getting your child testing for um, detecting any type of neurological differences and the good and I guess the bad that comes with testing. So let's have that conversation. First of all, the reason to get testing is typically fueled by seeing something that is different in your child and noticing that they're not typically developing or they may be a little bit older and you're starting to notice some difficulties at school or in the social setting or any other type of environment. So now you're wondering as a parent, hmm, what's going on and you know, should I get this child tested? Getting your child tested, it's a difficult choice. It's difficult because there is a huge financial commitment that comes with getting a child tested and it's also time consuming. So it's not just, you know, I'm going to get this thing done. There's a financial commitment because insurance may not cover all the testing and the therapist or the, or the psychologist that you take your child to may not take insurance. So there's a, there's a financial piece right there, but it's also a time consuming thing. Um, some tests can take up to six hours. For younger kids, it's broken down into three parts or maybe one hour per day, depending on the availability of both the psychologist and the child and your schedule also. So you're talking about there's a time commitment and there's a financial commitment. So if you are thinking about getting your child tested, make sure you factor those things into it and whether or not this is something that your family can do, um, especially pertaining to the financial piece and also the time commitment. Um, so why why would you get your child tested? So you're noticing that there's something going on. You notice that there's a difference. You're noticing that there's some struggles happening at school and the social dynamic and the social settings. And you want to know, hmm, should I, you know, why should I get tested? And if I should, why? The biggest reason to get your child testing tested is because now there's an understanding behind the behaviors that your child is experiencing. And the once you understand what's going on, it's going to alleviate unnecessary parenting struggles that you're going through with your child. So if you know why your kid is doing something, you're less likely to respond negatively and more likely to respond with empathy. And empathy having the understanding of what your child is going through, you're going to come from a different perspective and that's going to make your parenting easier and better. So really testing provide an insight into the child's brain with how they process information, how they take information in, what they know, what they don't know, what they're capable of, what they're not capable of. It really gives you a baseline to where to start. Now, if you've already had testing done in the past, or is it time to get another evaluation? Now, on average, when kids start to struggle, usually around the second or third grade, and if a parent gets a testing done then, they're wondering, well, how long is that test valid? And honestly, the validity of tests, basically at five years old, the child's going to have a different, um, a different outcome at 15 years old. There's a lot of developmental changes that happens in the course of those 10 years, and not to mention the onset of puberty and all these different things. So the five-year-old brain Yes, some of that component still exists. However, it has changed. It's um, it's evolved. It's become either stronger or the child have come up with better coping mechanisms or different coping skills to deal with their um, brain. So it's not the same thing. So no, a test is not valid from five to 15. Although I think maybe in some cases it might be, but for the majority of kids, they're not going to have the same profile. I'd like to think that if it's possible, if you can get like um, an insight every turn of the grade, so you'd have the elementary years, the middle school and high school, and definitely high school, it's that final conversation with your kid about, okay, so this is how your brain been functioning all along. And these are some of the skills that you're still weak at and we still need to work on. So you have a better insight into for college and how to handle things and how you learn and things like that. So. I mean, again, when their kids are young, kids are young, these developmental milestones are a big deal. But obviously, as you turn into an adult, there's no big difference between a 30-year-old and a 
36 year old, even though in the world of children, a 10 year old and a 16 year old, it's a big gap. So things like that. That's a good reason to get tested is to basically get a, a better snapshot and an understanding of what's going on. You can also get some home relief. So the emotional struggles and the parenting struggles that comes with dealing with a kid that you don't really know what's going on, it's easy to hold a lot of what they're saying personally and to hold their behavior like a personal attack as if they're being obstinate on purpose when in reality the child may not even be aware of what they're doing because they're not functioning like a neurotypical child. The atypical brain will do things and behave and act in a way that may seem as if it's in complete and total control, but in reality, it's not. So really, this can give you a better insight into the child's brain so you can now change the way you parent and look at it from a different lens and really put in the necessary tools for your child to be successful at home, but also for you to have a better peaceful home dynamic. So you're going to get yourself some home relief by having an insight into what that child brains look like. Um, academic relief. So when you're at, when your child goes to school every day, they're constantly faced with, you know, if let's say that this child has ADHD and they're constantly forgetting things and being off focus and not on task and things like that, they may just feel like there is something uniquely different and bad with them. But in reality, they just need to know different coping skills and different ways to adapt. And the school might also be able to help because you can create a partnership between the home environment and the school environment together so that the child becomes more successful. The school can offer an IEP or a 504 plan to really help alleviate some of the academic struggles that your kid is experiencing. Um, it's not necessarily that this kid can't do it. While they may lack the ability to focus, it's not that they lack intelligence. And not knowing that can definitely break a child's emotional um, um, health. So again, testing can provide an insight into, okay, this is what's going on. And here are some of the tools that we can provide to you as adults, as you know, caregivers, um, and as parents for you to be better equipped and to handle things better. So definitely the academic relief is extremely helpful. Social relief. So kids that are atypical typically are developmentally behind. They're not up to par with their chronological age. And as a child, if you're 16 years old, but you're behaving closer to a 12 year old, those 16 year old peers are going to notice that. Atypical peers are going to notice you're different, you're strange, you don't act the way that you should. You're not into the same interests and have the same likes as we do. So really we can give that child this information and say, listen, it doesn't mean you will never catch up, but this is why you like this instead of that. This is why you're into these things instead of that. The child may not necessarily understand it right now and pick it up and go, oh, okay, now I get it. But it definitely will give them a relief of, okay, so I'm not an oddball. I'm not an alien. I, I'm just a little behind, but eventually I'll catch up. And the catching up, again, a 30-year-old and a 36-year-old, you can't really tell. But in childhood, it's a big deal. How If you let the child know eventually they'll get there, you're going to provide some relief and also some social relief on you as a parent to change your expectation. If you understand now, okay, it's not that my child doesn't want to, it's just that they're not capable of performing at this level right now, that gives you a big sigh of relief to go, oh, okay, they're not ready for it now, but eventually they will be. And changing your expectations to exactly what they can do definitely will ease a lot of the parenting struggles. Um, psychological and medication relief, meaning if your child needs medicine to function and for whatever it is, if they need it, if medicine is going to open up that window, give your child that window so that the information can be poured in. If they're not capable of, you know, attaining information right now because they have a block or a barrier, 
medicine will do that, will open up that gate and be able to, you know, provide information. Now, medicine is not a fix, but it's definitely a useful tool when needed to be used and can be extremely effective. So definitely, if you get your child tested, the um, psychologist may recommend some type of medicine and you'll definitely check out your psychiatrist. Um, those are the individuals who provide medicine, a pediatric psychiatrist, to help you along the way to see what best fit the need of your child. Um, psychological relief comes in in terms of um, talk therapy. Sometimes a child just needs someone to talk to, a buddy, a friend, and there are tons of individuals out there that are well trained that can help your child kind of get over certain humps and things like that. So you can have talk therapy, which could be 100% effective and that's all you need. And you can have, you know, a psychiatrist, which would provide medicine and that can also provide some relief. It is also nice as a parent to know that you have options and that there are things that you can do to help your child and that you don't have to stay in this and struggle alone, but there are things that you can do. So again, there are a lot of reasons why you should get your child tested, especially if you're noticing some things, but there are the, the reasons not to, I definitely think are if it's going to cause a huge financial strain on your family, um, this may not be the best time. And also if you're not ready to put into action what the test is going to say, it's going. the test will have some recommendations. If you're not ready there, if you're not accepting of what that might look like, this may not be a good time because you may not be ready to fully take in what is needed because it's not just you get the test and you're done, it's you get the test and then there's some action steps to do after that. So again, these are some of the reasons why, you know, getting your child tested will be greatly beneficial to them and also to you and your family in general. Um, once again, I am B. Moyes. Thank you for joining me. Um, good luck on your unique parenting journey with your unique learner.